Crazy Nana, and this is Harlan, Harlan my grandson. And I have seen several, um, on several Facebook groups that I follow, women struggling to make bread. And I did too. I know right where they're coming from. When I first started making bread, you could have built a house with it. They were tough like a brick. My dear husband still ate them and pretended they were delicious. But over the years, I've tried a number of recipes and I have failed. I continued to just, my bread wouldn't raise. It was, it was awful. And I decided, you know, I'm not a person to follow recipes. And so why should I follow a recipe with my bread? And so over the last few years, I have become a pretty good ba bread baker. And I feel like my bread, what I'm going to show you today is simple. It's easy to use and anybody can do it. So the first thing you want to do is decide how big of a batch you want. If you're wanting to make like a single loaf or a small pan of rolls or something, go with a cup. But today I'm going to do a large uh, recipe because I want to show several things that you can do with it. So I'm going to start with four cups. My rule is up to two cups, one tablespoon of yeast. Four cups, two tablespoons of yeast. So today, with my four cups, Harden, can you pour the water for me? Yes. You wanna help me? And so we're gonna do four cups of water, which will mean that I put, I will put um, two tablespoons of yeast. So, but my water is pretty warm, and this is my opportunity to, if I'm putting butter or coconut oil, um, it will melt uh, right in the water. And so today I'm gonna use butter. And again, I don't measure. I just, that looks good. And there we go. So you need salt. Um, so about like that. And Harlan's gonna put a little bit in too. Okay, there we go. So then you can choose a sweetener. And I, I like to use maple syrup, honey, or just your straight sugar. And today we're gonna to use honey. No need to measure. My honey is raw honey right off the farm. And so this has sat for a while and it's sugared. Okay, Harlan, get that spoon and scrape it into the bowl like that. Can you scrape it in? There we go. And your bread is always going to be better if your grandson helps you. There we go. Okay. So now we want to kind of stir this around. Get the honey broke up. Get your butter broke up so it kind of starts melting. See, like that. You want to stir it, Harlan? You want to stir it for me? Yes. There we go. And you want your water just tempered warm. This is still a little warm. One more thing that we need to add before we do our yeast. This is our secret ingredient yogurt. Okay, Harlan, let's put some yogurt in. Now you don't need to measure this either. A good blop, one more blop. Ooh, a little more. There we go. Ooh, good job. We need you to stir it. Stir it up. Harlan, oh yeah, you can use that. Stir this. Very good. And my 
Water is getting cool enough. I'm gonna add an egg from our little ladies that up behind the house. Okay, stir it really good. Gotta stir that egg up. Keep stirring. There we go. Okay, my water is now at a nice temperature to where I can add the yeast. Hey, Harlan, get the teaspoon. Here, get the tablespoon. There we go. We need two tablespoons of yeast. Can you get two tablespoons? Okay, put it in. One more. There you go. Two corn shavers. Yeah. Okay, stir it. Let me get one of these flavors. This is one of my tricks that I do. I always proof my water before I add flour because if you have done something wrong, this is where it's going to fail. If give it about 15 minutes and if this does not bubble you know your water's been too hot so we're gonna let this set for about 15 minutes and when we come back i will show you how it has bubbled up and this is where we'll start adding the water okay we're back as you can see the liquid is now all bubbly and is showing that the yeast is working and ready for you to start adding flour. Harlan, are you ready to add the flour? Yes. Start by adding around a cup at a time. Okay, Harlan, add some more flour. Nana, okay, Nana. You want to stir it well, as this will help develop the gluten and cut back on the kneading time. Having your grandson play in the flour might help make the gluten develop too. <laughs> but I think though, it's more of a treasured moment. Okay, we're just about to where we can dump it out of the bowl. There's a lot of mixing there, but remember, you've been developing the gluten. Okay, Harlan, now we're ready to dump the dough out. Let's put a little flour on the table. Yes. Here's some for you. And Nana will dump hers out over here. Now we need to knead this. So you start pushing and Nana will start pushing. And when we're done, we're gonna use yours to make pizza. Okay, Nana. It's really important not to add too much flour. Keep your hands floured, a little bit of flour on your board that you're working on. But as the gluten develops while you're kneading, you just want barely enough flour to keep it from sticking to the board and your hands. Good job, Harlan. Good job kneading, Harlan. You know, when my kids were little, I did not take the time to cook with them. I was afraid of the mess. It was faster and easier just to do it myself, right? Sorry to say I missed opportunities for making memories and teaching my, my children a love for cooking. It's not going to be messy forever, but those treasured moments for making memories come and then they're gone. I'd encourage you to just get your children in the kitchen and help you cook. Bread making is a great place to start. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, we're just about done here. Poke the dough, and if it comes back out, you've had it kneaded enough. Give a couple more presses, and we're ready to go. Okay, so now the dough is ready. We need to put some oil in the bowl. No need to wash it out. Just put some oil. There you go, Harlan. Now put, make your dough kind of into a nice round ball and then drop it in your bowl and just get it oiled all over. And we're going to leave it set in this bowl for approximately an hour until it doubles in size. Here, Harlan, you need some oil too. Okay, put your dough in the bowl. There you go. And we'll let it rest until it's doubled in size and then we're going to make pizza. Our dough is well oiled, cover with saran wrap, and rest until doubled in size. Okay, Harlan, your dough is all ready. Nana got it kneaded down so you can start your pizza. Okay, mash it down. Remember? Oh, there we go. That's... Pizza. Do you like pizza? Yeah. Okay, we got to mash it flat. Can you think of a song for mashing? Mash, mash, no? mash, 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 mash. you like on your pizza? Milky dough. You like, you like cheese? Cheeto. Cheese and onions? And I'll eat onions. Oh, and pancake and pineapple? Yes. Okay, I think we have our crust just about mashed down here. So let's put it here, here, here. Let's put it on here. Now we've got to put, what's this? Sauce. We've got to put sauce on it. Do, 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 do. Okay, spread it around. Okay, what comes next? What do we need on our pizza next? Cheeto. Cheese. No eating it. <laughs> no eating it. Put it on your pizza. What about, do you want onions or pineapple? Put this in the oven and bake it for um, 350 until done. You'll have a nice golden brown crust and it's going to be yummy. Okay, so our bread has doubled in size. I've got it dumped out here on the table. And you want to give it one more good knead to get all the air bubbles out. And if you have a grandson to help, that's even better. There. And so you're just, is all you're doing is working out the air bubbles. And I'm going to make a loaf of bread. And I'm going to give this, kind of flatten it out, and then, okay, just a minute, Harlan. Then we fold it over and give a press, a press, fold it over, fold it over, give a press, and then you shape your look. Whoops, Harlan, not yet. Okay, Harlan, we've got to spray our pan. This is one of the things I love about this dough recipe. It is so versatile, and I'm gonna show you a couple of different things you can do with this bud dough, starting with a loaf. And you wanna spray it. And I'm gonna mark it. And then we'll set it aside to rise. You'll we'll want to cover it with a piece of saran wrap so it doesn't dry out as it's rising. Okay, we're going to try a couple other recipes here. I'm going to make focaccia. Focaccia. Oil your pan. 
Okay. Okay. Can you help me spread it around, Harlan? We got to cover the bottom with oil all over. The oil is to help keep it from sticking in the pan, but it also gives a nice uh, crumb to the bottom of the bread. It'll be nice and crispy and ooh, just delicious. Okay, so you take your dough, put it in your pan. Harlan, I'm needing help. Can you help me push it down? And you spread your dough out until it fills the pan. Kind of like what we did with the pizza, but this is going to be thicker. And you want to put a little oil on top. And use your fingertips to kind of make holes in it. Just like that. Then, we're going to put a little basil on there. My name is Ah, uh, pesto. pesto. Spread it around. Can yeah, can you spread it around? Get some more. Yeah, we got to have some more. We got it all over, so we're done with that. And then we need some garlic. Garlic. Need some garlic. Garlic is good, huh? Garlic is good, huh? Yes. Then we need some parmesan. Can you put parmesan on? Shake a shake a, all over. Oop, okay, just a minute. Let's spread. We need some in this corner, in this corner. Okay, how about some onions? Onions. Can you sprinkle onions? What about olives? These are jalapeno olives. This will give it some spice. So we spread them around really good because we don't want them too thick. Okay, what about some sweet peppers? Some more cheese. We need to sprinkle this just like that. How about some cheese? And we just need a little bit. Just like that. Can you put some on just a little bit? What? <laughs> Okay, now we got to set this aside to raise, and when it's doubled in size, we'll put it in the oven at 400 and bake until done. And it'll be a nice golden brown on top, and this is so good. Great with soup, great with salad, or just good anytime. So, one last thing you want to do before you do the focaccia. You want to melt some butter, and then you just drizzle it over the top. Just drizzle it over the top like that. So Harlan, we are going to make rolls, but we're going to make them different. Let's put some, I'm putting some basil leaves out here, and I'm going to knead that into my dough. So we'll have one, and this looks like too much, but it is not. And we're going to knead that into the dough, and then we're going to make rolls. You know what? I have some leftover cheese. Let's knead that in, too. Okay. Walk out. Okay, yummy. Yeah. See, you know, the, main, the fun thing about cooking, don't be afraid to experiment. I've, I've put a lot of things... <laughs> <laughs> you don't like that cheese, huh? But I, I'm not. I'm never afraid to experiment. And if it doesn't turn out, no big deal. You've learned. Don't do that one again. 
but I have come up with some of the most wonderful combinations just by experimenting. Okay, I think we just about have this all worked in. And again, you want to oil your, your vessel that you're gonna cook in. And then, you pinch off a size about like that. And then you make your ball and set it there. Squeeze off another one. Squeeze off another one. Okay, I have probably gotten a bigger pan than I need. So what I'm gonna do is just put a little more space between the rolls. They'll fill out. Oh, let's do a big one like this. Let Nana make this big one. And he would go right there really good. Okay, so we're gonna let this rise, double in size, pop it in the oven. 350 and probably about 25 minutes and they'll be done. We'll come back when everything's out of the oven. Look what came out of the oven. Doesn't that look delicious? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to try some? Would you like to try some? Yes. Yeah. I need to try it. Okay. There you go, Harlan. Okay, here's yours. It's hot. Ready to try? I'm gonna take a bite. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Mm. Even the pineapple. Did we forget something important? Yes. We forgot to pray. Let's pray. Thank you for this day. And Jesus, thank you for this day. Amen. Amen. We should always remember to pray, huh? Because Jesus loves you and me. Look at all the bread has come out of the oven. Are you hungry? Yes. Would you like some bread? Yes. Okay. There's nothing like homemade bread. Don't be afraid to experiment. The very worst that could happen is it doesn't turn out and you try again. These four items that we made today, the pizza, the focaccia, <laughs> the rolls, and the bread started with four cups of water. Ouch. And you have a lot of options that you can use with that one dole. Thank you for watching. And remember, Jesus loves you. Have a great day.